Well everybody, this is what you've been waiting for. The people who have been here on my channel for a long time have probably wanted this so badly, and I'm very happy to be bringing this video to you. You guys love when I rank stuff weakest to strongest, and today I have for you the most important one ever. That's right, we're going over the early bug Pokemon. I referenced Bulbapedia for this video to figure just what counts as an early bug, and in doing so, I managed to come up with 13 entries for this list. This one is a really interesting one, as not many of these Pokemon are even slightly good for competitive. So I think for a good portion of this video, we're going to be talking about how not so great many of these Pokemon are. Don't worry though, because a few of these are actually rather good. Now before we get into all of these creepy crawlies, I just want to give a big thanks to our sponsor, ExpressVPN. They offer you some great protection for your devices and allow you to watch region block content wherever you are. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and is essentially a way to hide yourself while you browse the internet. I know a lot of you guys are probably really excited for Halloween coming up next month, so why not hide your internet identity with a nice VPN costume so hackers and spies can't get your information? Though a fashionable costume that protects you on the internet isn't the only thing this great service will offer you. You can use all that extra time you have no longer worrying about your safety by logging on to Let's Go in the Netflix Canada at this time, which offers several different shows that you can't watch in the US. I'm personally checking out Close Enough, the newest show from the creator of Regular Show. It seems really funny. Thanks to ExpressVPN, it doesn't matter where you are, you'll be able to watch any region locked show in a safe and reliable way. If you sign up for ExpressVPN now, you'll be able to experience the thrilling feeling of safety and worldwide's entertainment. You can go to expressvpn.com slash mysticumbrion and get three months for free when you sign up. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to learn more and get started today. So naturally, we're going to get started with the weakest of the bunch, and it's of course the bug representative of Sinnoh, Cricketune. You guys all know it's Cry by Heart, but what you may not know is its stat line and just how poor it is. See, Cricketune's highest stat is 85 in attack, which doesn't look bottom of the barrel at first glance, but then when you think about the fact that its next highest stat is 77 in HP, and after that 65 in speed, it becomes very clear just how atrocious it is. Its move pool is absolutely horrible, with a few bug moves being its highlights like Bug by and X Scissor, but that is truly it. Like sure, it's a bit wild to see a bizarre Pokemon like this having a move like Giga Impact at its disposal, though what's even worse is the fact that it actually has a very good hidden ability that truthfully is wasted on it. That's right, Cricketune has Technician, and it is really unfortunate that it's wasted on such a Pokemon. There is nothing positive to say about this one other than its memorable cry, and I think we're done here. Alright, next up, we're going to be going with one of Wurmple's final evolutions. The practically as bad as Cricketune moth itself, Dustox. This thing is not really at all worth celebrating, and it's sort of blown out of the water by its sister evolution, Beautifly. That being said though, in the very least it is better than Cricketune since it isn't purely a bug type, but instead has the poison typing as well. Its stats, however, are somehow all around worse. Dustox is defensive in the loosest way possible, with 90 base special defense and 70 base defense, those two being its highest stats. Its speed is a miserable base 65, with its attack stats being 50 on both ends. Its move pool is nothing at all to be excited about either, because while it has access to some pretty good moves, it lacks the attack stats to make the most of them. I guess having access to Quiver Dance is the one and only good thing Dustox has going for it. And even then, it can sit at the bottom of the barrel with Cricketune. Wow. I just realized, as we get to the next one, that we've been dropping back a generation with each entry, including this one. We head back to the second generation now with the original spider, Ariados. Once again, we're dealt with a bad Pokemon that is at least better than its predecessors on this list, featuring that same bug poison dual typing that we will see a few times throughout this ranking. Ariados, to be fair, has some competitive usage throughout its existence, and more recently, it's been used to set things up like Toxic Spikes and Sticky Web. However, there's more Pokemon that I have the time to list off that absolutely outclass it. Ariados has 40 base speed, which is just abysmal, and its attack stat, being base 90, can't even be taken advantage of due to the poor speed and basic 70 defenses. Like I said, Ariados has seen very rare usage recently for its opportunities as a setup Pokemon, but its awful abilities do it no favors either, and it's all around disappointing Pokemon. Well, we're kind of breaking our streak now, because instead of going back another generation to Kanto, we're sticking in Johto and talking about Ladian. Ladian, at the very least, has a stat line that jumps out a little more like compared to the prior Pokemon, because somehow you could build a special defensive Pokemon with it. That being said, as usual, there are a ton of better options, as there's no HP in Ladian at all, at base 55, and its attack stats are 35 in physical and 50 in special. However, like I said, you could probably build one that takes advantage of the base 110 special defense in 80 speed. 
speed. Ladian has access to light screen and reflect, which can be used to help up those defenses and can use some offensive moves like air slash and bug buzz. But with the bad offenses it has, there's no real point. Ladian is merely a step up from the Pokemon prior. But that's not saying a whole lot for Johto's offerings with its early bugs. Well, now we're going forward again, because we're headed back to Hoenn to talk about the alternative to Dust Tox, the Butterfly Pokemon, Beautifly. Now, even Game Freak knows that Beautifly is better, because its base stat total is actually 395, while Dust Tox is at 385. Naturally, the big difference of the two outside of that is the fact Beautifly really focuses in on being an attacker, while Dust Tox definitely is into its defensive side. That being said, this is kind of where the tables turn, and we start seeing Pokemon that are more usable out in battle. Beautifly is by no means a dominant force in the battlefield. However, I believe that you can make use of its 100 special attack in the right scenario with moves like Bug Buzz and Air Cutter, alongside Quiver Dance. Again, I don't suggest using this Pokemon, but I think we'll start seeing more usable ones beyond this. Next up, we have got another butterfly Pokemon to talk about, and that is Kalos's Vivian. See, Vivian is an interesting case in that it has some sort of bulk while also being a fast special attacker, meaning it makes great usage of Quiver Dance. Its HP stat is base 80, with a special attack of base 90 and 89 speed. The moves in its pool include Hurricane, Bug Buzz, Energy Ball, and Psychic, and they're all aided greatly by those stats. It even makes use of Compound Eyes as an ability, which would help a move like Hurricane greatly. My earlier point about having some sort of bulk didn't exactly equate to having good bulk, as the thing holding back Vivian is definitely its poor defenses, which both sit at 50, meaning if something outspeeds, it's going to hit hard. Vivian is all power and nothing else, and that's what is holding it back here. All right, now I'm happy to say we can take a step back to the very first generation and bring up Butterfree. Butterfree, also fun fact, is my favorite bug Pokemon of all time and even in my top five favorites. But moving on now, I thought there was a good chance we'd have seen Butterfree a little higher up, but unfortunately, not even its new Gigantamax form was enough to influence me to put it any higher than that. Butterfree definitely doesn't have crazy stats by any means, with this 90 base special attack complemented by 80 in special defense and 70 in speed. But those stats do mean it can make great usage of Quiver Dance, which it learns at level 44. When used, it'll make those stats better, and then moves like Air Slash and Bug Buzz become even more powerful, flanked by other good moves like Psychic, Shadow Ball, and Hurricane, which can be learned by TR. G-Max Befuddle, which is a signature move of its G-Max form, is also a great move that inflicts a status ailment. Butterfree is loaded with potential, but even then, it still isn't as threatening as what comes after. Alright, how about we move over to Unova next, just to change things up a bit. We're coming now with the first physical attacker that we've seen on this ranking. I mean, my bad, sorry, I meant the first physical attacker that is actually any good. Its attack stat is the highest we've seen so far at 102 base, and its speed is a great complement at base 92. Levani is of course the Pokemon I'm talking about here, and it is most certainly the best Pokemon we've got so far on this ranking. Levani gets access to moves like X-Scissor, Leaf Blade, and Poison Jab, which help make it a great option out in the battlefield when dealing with several different kinds of Pokemon. It learns Sword Stance by level up, and if that wasn't enough for you, it also gets access to Screech. Okay, I know the last one had nothing to do with anything, but I just wanted to bring up Screech. He is without a doubt the best save by the Bell character. Anyway, lame jokes aside, Levani misses out on the top 5 because of its pretty awful abilities, and the difficulty of of conquering the weaknesses that it has to deal with, including two massive weaknesses to fire and flying. Though, I have to say, Levani is definitely the best thing we've seen so far, so let's change that. Alright, here we go. Top 5. Let's get into this with the only Pokemon in this ranking that can Mega Evolve, and that's Beedrill. Now, Beedrill as a Mega is extremely strong and also stupid fast, and that is something I can't deny. It'll hit hard and quick. And really, it has to, as its defenses are awful. As a Mega, it has 40 in the physical defense and 80 in special, so don't expect it to stay out in the field for long if it is somehow outsped. When not Mega Evolved though, Beedrill has base 90 attack and 75 base speed. And while that isn't bad, it certainly isn't great. Really, the thing that brings Beedrill this high is its Mega, but this is where it caps out. Strong and fast is one thing, but it can't take a hit, and its move pool is a little lacking, even if it has access to some moves like x Poison Jab, U-Turn, and Knock Off. You know what you're getting with Beedrill if you can Mega Evolve it, but when it just stands on its own merit, you just don't get too much out of it. We've come this far and not spoken a word about Galar, and I think it's time we finally change that. Orbeetle burst on the scene, quite literally in Sword and Shield, as a very interesting psychic bug type that ended up being able to Gigantamax. This is definitely the most defensive of all the early bug Pokemon, with Orbeetle boasting 120 special defense and 110 defense. Though, admittedly, it doesn't have a great HP stat, so it isn't super bulky. 
However, thanks to being able to Gigantamax, it ends up gaining a whole mess of bulk as well as access to the G-Max move, Gravitas, which will ground Pokemon and leave them open to certain attacks they might have been able to avoid otherwise. Speaking of attacks Orbital gets access to, Light Screen and Reflect for support, as well as Calm Mind and Stored Power. There is a lot you can do with Orbital to get the most out of it, and with Telepathy for a hidden ability, it makes Orbital all the more better in Double Battles too. There is not too much left to say here, other than keep an eye out for UFOs. They could be a real life Orbital. You know, in doing this, I've come to realize that a lot of these bug Pokemon have wings, and yet none of them are flying types. Well, Ladian was and so was Beautifly, but that's just two out of most of this list. The next Pokemon we have here is known as the Bee Fly Pokemon, and it's Rebombi. Rebombi holds a distinction of being the only bug fairy type, and with that typing comes a slew of great moves that it has in its move pool. It has access to Moonblast, Pollen Puff, Energy Ball, and of course Quiver Dance. While its typing is interesting and fresh, it definitely has a fair share of weaknesses to strong typings that it needs to contend with. But regardless of that, it's still a great Pokemon that can be used competitively. It has base 124 speed and base 95 special attack, which come together to create a speedy little thing that will slam into anything with powerful special attacks. The case for Rebombi is actually a rather simple one. It's super strong and fast with a fantastic pool of moves and a good ability in Shield Dust. It could have easily been higher, but the Pokemon I chose ahead of it were just good enough to beat it out. We now reach the penultimate Pokemon, and I feel you guys probably already know what it is, as number one was rather obvious from the get-go. However, just in case you have no idea, allow me to introduce to you Alola's Vikafold. This thing is a monster offensively, as it checks in at base 145 special attack. The rest of its stats, to be fair, lag behind a little bit. It has god awful speed and not so great HP, but it does have a solid base 90 defense. Vikavolt is definitely some sort of a nuclear bomb Pokemon, as it will absolutely crush most Pokemon under the weight of its Bug Buzz, Thunderbolt, and Volt Switch as well. Volt Switch is also a really incredible move because it can do damage and get out if it's in a tough spot. The thing that holds it back though from being the best of the bugs is definitely that speed. And it's unfortunate too, because that special attack is just so dang high. That last sentence is a perfect segue, however, in the number one. The best early bug Pokemon is one that has absolutely nothing to worry about when it comes to speed, because its ability is Speed Boost. Scullipede has base 112 speed right off the bat, but like I said, it has Speed Boost, which just puts it over the top. Nothing will outspeed Scullipede after a turn, and from there, it'll be able to make great use of that 100 base attack that tear through opponents. Give it Poison Jab, Mega Horn, Earthquake, and even Swords Dance, and you'll be able to bring this thing into battle and have it succeed in a competitive atmosphere against almost anything. I don't even need to go any further with this because it's just so good. And you all already know that Scullipede is the king of early bugs, hands down. Alright, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I feel pretty confident that I got this one right. But even then, I want to know down below how you guys would rank these bugs from weakest to strongest. Also, I want to give one more shout out to today's sponsor, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. Thanks again, and remember to use expressvpn.com slash mysticumbrion so you can get three months for free when you sign up. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel for notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream all sorts of games from Pokemon to Fire Emblem to Zelda and much more. I also have an anime channel called Mystic Sage where I do anime reviews, rankings, and countdowns. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to support me even further in Gang Cold Perks, check out my Patreon. These lovely people have all given me their support over there, and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm wrap this up, though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.